Hey guys, let's take a look at the Parthians on campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to a, the campaign map as Parthia. Today we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, uh, how they are, how they start, what's the tactics that you can do with them and then the pros and the cons, the strengths and weaknesses of Parthia on the campaign and then we're gonna be selecting a tier for the Parthians. So let's get started with their starting position, that's fitting I think. So they start with three cities, Susa, Arsakia and all the way over here, Campus Sakai. Um, they have a good population pool to be fairly honest, like for example here, 4,600 4, people, 3,600 people on the capital and then 6,300 6, people on, on Susa, which is really, really good if, if I might be, if I might say so myself. However, they are a little bit spread out. Um, not a little, they are very spread out, like, you, you're gonna take a, a few turns, like, at least five turns, for example, to get from Susa to Arsakia, so that's quite a bit. Um, anyway, they have access to a baby settlement in Fraspa, so that's good. Some factions do not have access to a baby settlement, um, and they, they cannot get it on turn one, but they can get it on turn two, so... Yeah, that's definitely uh, one of the ways to go in the beginning. They are they will be bordering three factions early on, Seleucia. They will be bordering Arta Artaxarta. I mean, uh, the, the Seleucids, the Armenians and the Scythians. They will be bordering the three of them. I mean, okay, you already have a border with with the Armenians, so never mind. But as soon as you get a Fraspa, you're going to have a big border with them. And then you have to worry about them, right? Then you can recruit horse archers right from the get-go, from Ursakia, for example. And you have money f for that. And they have cheap um, upkeep, so you can uh, start spamming those. You have very low starting income. If, we, if you come over here, you just have 59 projected profits. But worry not, my friend. You can just go and very high tax uh, both Arsakia and and Susa. Don't do that to Campus Sakai, they will rebel. So, And you're going to be making 868 uh, denarii. Now, we're going to be over some more of this later, but um, let's end the e e the low starting income uh, point right now and, and go to the next one. You don't have access to good ports, to good trading ports. You have access to these, but you only have one two or three um, trade routes going on like late game this might be a decent body of water but um, it's not in the early game for sure you need to get to Kotais to get good port a good port or even better you need to get to Antioch to get a really good port right there with lots of um, lo lots of resources and stuff anyway this is their starting position pretty much um, it's uh, it's it's not it's not great it's not great guys poor economy uh, I mean they have some units Mighty. right they start with some horse archers uh, horse archers here it's, it's okay um, but it's pretty poor you're you're really spread out your cities are are really far from from one another um, and, and as such is it's almost like you were playing three factions and then you start making barely any money which will also make it more difficult. So there's ways to get that up uh, within the first few turns. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, let's go to the tactics section. And this is uh, very interesting. So you have four ways, four main ways you can go about it. And the first one, uh, let's start here with uh, Campus Sakai. The first one obviously is, you know, you just get, get some troops from over here and you go to Campus Alani. Um, and you attack the Scythians. Now the thing is, why am I just putting this um, uh, alone is because, you know, this is going to require some money because you need some troops over here. So this is going to require you to recruit some troops to get in Campus Sakai so that you can go to Campus Alani and uh, yeah, that might be some trouble. It's, it's going to be a little bit on the expensive side. Then you can, of course, go to um, towards the Armenians. That's the number two tactic. You just go, oof, Armenians, you, I'm, I'm gonna take you. Then you have the number three, which is get Susa and just, oof, go to Seleucia. And they have quite the garrison over here, as you can see, you know, it's seven units, but they will eventually take some units out of, uh, out of that. So you can just 
go ahead and besiege it and then they will attack you from the outside just make sure to get a couple Mighty more maybe uh, horse archers or maybe just Sire. get some mercenaries on the way uh, either works fine and then we have the fourth one which is yeah you can go here to Dumatha boom you go to Dumatha uh, and by the way guys in every single one of these scenarios you're also getting frostbow okay so just yeah you can go here to Dumatha and then Bostra and uh, or Palm Palmyra there's just one setback is that you will be bordering Egypt and Egypt is pretty strong so I mean Egypt is not very strong like the, the, their roster is not that good but they pretty much have um, chariot archers uh, archers and spearmen so they might be a little bit of a challenge especially with those chariots chariots tends to be good against Goth in Rome 1 Anyway, these are the four main ways of, of expanding, and I think you cannot do every single one. You know, I, I think you cannot do more than one at the same time. Maybe doing two and three at the same time, so for example, getting uh, Armenia and the Seleucid Empire at the same time, that might work. But uh, do not do more than that. And if, you, if you're going to go for the one, just do the one. Don't do the others. I mean, get Fraspa. Maybe if, uh, if the Armenians get cheeky, then reinforce it maybe fight the armenians a couple of times but that's it anyway let's go to the pros and cons let's go to the pros and cons of this of this thing so what are the pros of of, of the parthians and i had a hard time getting coming up with um with with these pros and these cons because they are just mm, i think it's a fun campaign you start on the edge of the map so that's that uh, that always that is always good but um they start really, really separated. So any faction that wants, they can take one of your settlements, and you don't really have an answer for that. If if they, if they actually uh, besiege you with a stronger force, so that, that's pretty bad. Anyway, uh, let's start the pros. The pros. Law enforcement buildings and temple. Yes, yes, guys. So the Parthians only have one temple. They don't have access to two, nor three, nor four. It's just one. It's just the Shrine of Zoroastra. So there's also no way to choose it. But if we come here to the last level of it, to the temple complex, it's a 25% happiness and 25% bonus due to law. I mean, uh, the, it's 25 due to happiness and 25 due to law. So that is pretty good. That's a 50% bonus to your public order. Um, that will uh, lower your corruption. And by the way, let me check something out here. Um, that you are going to see. You see this corruption over here? Look at that. Look at that. We are almost halving halving that uh, that corruption and by the way even better they have this uh, execution square this is the law enforcement buildings look at that you you are going to be making 120 denarii out of this just just because you have the execution square and having both will take care of corruption altogether so this is definitely something you can do to solve your money problems in the early game uh, all right anyway I, w I was yeah that that is it Anyway, you can get 50% bonus uh, to happiness with the temples, then you can get 20% more with the secret police network, with the law enforcement line. So that is pretty good. You, you, you're going to have a 70% public order bonus from those two buildings. Um, you know, it's not, it's not amazing. There is better. You know, there's factions who have up to 80%. But it's already good having those 70%. So no problem at all. That's good. They So next pro. They can take the Hanging Gardens pretty early on. Yeah, you just need to take Seleucia, and that's a 20% bonus to your farming output. And look at that. Your farming output is just 1,600, but 20%, that's going to be maybe 300 um, denarii. 300 and something denarii that you're going to be making surplus to this. So that's already, if you do the temple and the execution square, if you take the Hanging Gardens, you're going to be making about 1,500 more denarii just from that so that's pretty decent that's five units of horse archers that you can uh, sustain that's how i see it then you have cheap upkeep on the horse archers you know 110 denarii per per unit on on you know so that you guys can relate that to something the peasants cost 100 100 denarii um upkeep so horse archers just cost 10 more might as well just have horse archers right even though the peasants are much better to keep uh, the law on on the settlements anyway they have access to the trade caravan all right so what is the trade caravan um the trade caravan is 
this building over here increased in tradable goods now of course uh, we have no percentages as to how much this increases your um, your trade potential right how much this increases your trade income but the thing is that they will be increasing your trade income a little bit more than the traders are going to be increasing your trade income so having both trade caravan and trader is really really good it will help you quite a bit so don't be afraid to build that. It seems that it barely does anything, right? It barely does anything, especially if we come here. Okay, how much? 53 to 62. That's just an increase of 9 denarii. But look at that market. That's just an increase of 4 denarii. So it's not a lot, but in the late game, it will um, it will get way, way better because you're going to be making much more money from trade. So um, having the trade caravans and the... Um, and the markets will actually increase it by more. I think I think that is a percentage that they increase. Anyway, on the late game, these guys are super good um, because of their cataphracts and their cataphract camels and their elephants and uh, their Persian cavalry and the cities that they capture over here. Like, if you come over here... You're going to be super powerful. You're going to be making a lot of trade. If you take the Colossus of Rhodes later on, then you're going to be super, super rich. With the trade caravans, man, you're going to be super, super rich. Um, of course, that al almost every faction in the late game is a powerhouse. But the Parthians particularly, because of the access to the trade caravan on top of the trader... Um, they don't have any temple that increases tradable goods. However... Um, yeah, they will have access to one of the richest places in, in this game, which is here, this place over here, Antioch, Sidon, Jerusalem, um, Salamis, you know, you if, if you get to Egypt, but, you know, that's going to be really cool. Anyway, Cataphracts and Horse Archers late game is a great combination, it's a great combo, and um, it's a killer, it's a killer, like, they're really, really good. Anyway, they have a lot of cons. They also have a lot of cons. Um, probably the same number. You know, I, I put the same number of cons as, as pros. So let's go with the, con the, the cons. The regions are very spread and isolated when you begin. Yes, it's true. So it's it, it will be very difficult for you to actually expand with the, with the Parthians. On medium difficulty, it's pretty easy because the AI is not very aggressive. But if you go to hard difficulty or very hard difficulty, then you might start having trouble. All right. So that's definitely worth considering. And um, then your, your roster is just cavalry. You know, because the other units suck and you should not use them. Um, Hillmen, Eastern Infantry, e Eastern Spearmen, no, please don't use that. You know, spare yourself the pain of using those guys. Uh, just use Horse Archers. This is bo both... Um, th this is mainly a, a, a bad thing for me, I think, because it, it's a l you have to play the same way every single time. And there will be armies that will give you a lot of trouble. Egypt, I'm looking at you. They will really, really give you trouble uh, with their chariot archers and stuff. Because your horse archers are susceptible to um, arrow fire. So, yeah, that's not good. Anyway, then they have a very weak economy early on. Yes, they do. You saw that. Look at this. We have two settlements on very high tax rate. And we're just making under a thousand. Under 900 um, denarii. All right. So, they are really, really... Um, really really poor in the beginning of the campaign but that is enough to get you about four or five horse archers enough to start you on your campaigns though very weak economy you're not going to be able to do a lot of building in the beginning so use your 5000 beginning denarii very very carefully um, then they have one potential enemy per settlement so for Susa it's the Seleucids for Arsakia it's the Armenians and for Campus Sakai, it's the Scythians. You need to watch out for that because if the three of them attack you, it's going to be very, very hard to come to come back from that. You have to give up one of the settlements or two of the settlements even so that you can start your campaign in just one place. <laughs> okay, so that can be a major setback and that can make the Parthians way weaker than they should be. Um, and then the battles will be difficulty and challenging, especially later on when you start finding armored, well armored troops like um, bronze shields, uh, silver shields, 
armored hoplites, Roman legionaries. Uh, all right. So these are later one. It, if you get e if if you let Egypt live for long enough, they will start making her as guardsmen. They are well armored, and your arrows are not going to be able to do much. You pray that you have cataphracts when that happens, because cataphracts are going to be the thing that save you saves you late game and makes your battles bear bearable. Okay, that's what's going to going to happen. Because otherwise, you're going to have to be micromanaging every single unit, and it's, it's actually not easy. Especially on higher difficulties, because the enemy has more attack, more defense, more morale. That's going to be absolutely tough. Now, anyway, so what tier will the Parthians have here on the, on the campaign? Well, in my opinion, um, due to all of their difficulties, especially in the early game, it's like if you're playing in higher difficulties, you're, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. You need to play very, very carefully. You need to fight... Um, with a lot of skill, so this is not for the faint of hearts. It's a very very difficult um, Campaign to play for sure um, So f in, in my opinion, right? It's fun. It's fun for me. I love playing as the Parthians So but for me, I don't think they can go for the A tier or S tier because they're not very strong Especially early on of course that when you get to the late game, you're gonna be a powerhouse But then again who? gets to the late game and is not a powerhouse. I don't know. Um, most factions are kind of like that, right? Um, these guys have the advantage of having the cataphracts, horses and, and, and camels, and the elephants as well, which, you know, just crushes. It's it's a shock faction completely. And if you have all of that, all of those units, then yeah. But otherwise, you know, as I said, every faction will be a late game powerhouse. So I don't think, I don't think they can be a, an A tier. I don't think they can be an, a B tier either simply because the B tier um, you know it would it would mean they were average you know like okay it's not it's not extremely difficult it's not extremely hard it's not extremely boring but it's also not extremely easy right it's it's right there in the middle but no I don't think they are in the middle right look at this if, if everyone attacks you which in higher difficulties is probable you're gonna get wrecked right it's not it's not a it's not a B tier right I and, and is it a C tier though? Is it a C tier or is it a D tier? In my opinion, guys, this is my final opinion. It's um, a C tier faction. The Parthians are a C tier faction on the campaign. And it pains me to give them a C tier because I really love playing as the Parthians here on Rome 1. I really, really do. Um, but it is what it is, guys. It's the pros and the cons. Considering everything, I really believe it's the C tier. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys found something new today. I, th I hope you guys learned something new about your one of your favorite factions, maybe. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you disagree with me, please leave a comment below saying why you disagree. And if you enjoyed the video, like the video. If you're still here so far, you know, and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I think it's a really great... Um, time to slap that subscribe button. I think I've earned it if you stayed here this long. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.